Welcome. This video is going to be all about color grading. If you haven't already watched my video about color correction, I recommend watching that one first. Um, it's important to get the color correction down before you start to grade. So check that one out and then jump into this one. So in this video, I'm going to try and touch on a few different ways that I create these looks on my professional work. As with everything in video, this is a lot down to your own style as a filmmaker. This is not the right way or the only way to do it. You know, take this advice with a pinch of salt. You use the bits you find useful I and mean, ignore the bits you don't. And in fact, I encourage you to be creative and, and not just copy other people's work, but to do something that is your own style. I'm hoping this will exist more as a sort of example of how the process works and not a sort of how to create a certain look. It doesn't matter what software you're using, I'm going to be using Final Cut. If you use Final Cut, you can follow along step by step. I'm not using any plugins, I'm just going to be using the built-in Final Cut. Um, if you use a different program, you can achieve the same things. Your your um, interface might just look slightly different, so bear that in mind. I've got a few clips from my buddy Jacob. Check him out at Jacob Tappen Norris if you haven't already from my other videos. He's an absolutely rad skier. Um, and I'm gonna show you two different ways to create a grade. One is gonna be the sort of cheat method using a LUT, and the other is gonna be a sort of ground up from scratch method of building a grade specifically for a clip. So first of all, I've got some clips here in the timeline. They have all been color corrected and balanced, so they are all consistent. And you can see that here, if I turn that color correction off, that's the raw clip and that's with the color correction. If you want more advice on color correction, check out my last video, as I mentioned earlier, um, which is an in-depth guide on how to color correct clips properly. Unlike color correction, which I apply individually to each clip for a grade, I'm going to use an adjustment layer. So I'm going to grab an adjustment layer from my titles browser here. Final Cut doesn't come with adjustment layers built in, but men, there are many available on the internet with a quick Google search. You can find some for free. Um, I will try and stick a link in the description for one of these. I'm also going to assign the video roll adjustment layer because I like to keep my timeline organized. And that way when I apply all my grade to the adjustment layer here, it's going to affect everything below it. And it means that if I want to adjust that grade, I can do so very easily with one or two clicks as opposed to having to copy paste all my changes over every single clip. If you've color corrected properly, there's no reason why your grade shouldn't work across all your clips without any adjustment really. There are a few things I always do on my grades. Um, pretty much in every case, just because it's a stylistic choice, things that I think look good and have worked well for me. First of those is to add a hue saturation curve. Scroll down here, you've got your hue versus hue, hue versus sat, hue versus luma. Those are like your HSL sliders in Lightroom, and we'll get back to those a bit later. And below that, we've got our luma versus sat, sat versus sat, and, and color versus sat here. Um, so we're going to use these three to make a few basic adjustments here. So luminosity versus saturation on the x-axis here we've got luminosity, shadows on the left, highlights on the right, and on the y-axis we've got saturation. So 0% at the bottom, 100% at the top. And I'm going to draw a curve by adding a couple points here and here. I'm going to bring the shadows all the way down to zero, the highlights all the way down to zero, and then just round that curve off a little bit. And basically what this is doing is it's desaturating the brightest and darkest parts of my video. Um, and I like to do that because it just kind of makes sure that you have very black blacks and very white whites. I'm then gonna move down to the saturation curve here and I'm gonna bring the right hand side, which is the most saturated part of my video, slightly down just to balance out the saturation across the video and make sure there's not one part of my video that's more saturated than another. And then finally in the color versus sat, I'm gonna 
increase the saturation in all of the midtones of the colors here. Um, and that is just a sort of stylistic choice. Again, I think it really helps with skin tones and things like that if you have a slightly more saturated midtone. So if I turn that off and on, you'll see it looks quite minimal and hopefully if you've done a good color correction, you shouldn't see a massive difference. Um, but I like to apply those three things right off the bat because it just helps to balance some of those issues that you'll find in your videos. Cool, so now that's done, let's scroll back up here. I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna add a color curve. Again, this is just like your curves in Lightroom. I'm just gonna use the Luma curve. I'm not gonna to touch the red, green, and blue ones for now. And I'm gonna add a very slight S curve just to increase the contrast in my video. I quite like a contrasted video there something like that and if i turn that off and on you'll see it just adds a little bit of a pop to the video there so those are my sort of basic adjustments i tend to do those on almost all of my grades obviously i adjust and tweak them depending on the video and the settings and you should do the same if you choose to use them with that done i'm now going to start looking at the look itself and the main way i'm going to affect that is by changing the colors in the video um, like I said, there are two ways to do this. The first way is using LUTs. So let's grab a LUT from our effects browser here by typing in LUT, taking the custom LUT effect and dragging that onto our adjustment layer. And if I come back to the video settings here, there you see I've got the LUT here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the mix all the way down to zero, and then I'm gonna choose my LUT. I use all my own LUTs. Um, here, there's a pack of five here. You can actually get these five LUTs for free on my website. And these are some of my other LUTs which I will be making available soon. I'm not quite finished working on them yet. These five I've been using for the last few years on all my professional work. LUTs will always look horrible when you stick them on at full intensity. LUTs are not designed to be stuck on at full intensity. You should really be using them down the low end of the mix scale here. And that's why I say you should always bring the mix to zero before you put a LUT on. That way, once you've chosen the LUT you want, let's say I choose to work with Cadrona here, I can then slowly bring that mix up until I get to a point where I'm happy how, with how it looks. Usually for me, I find that tends to be around the 0.25. I quite like my videos to look sort of realistic and not too edited. Um, it's quite common to see videos that have been completely over edited. So usually around 0.25 and in extreme cases, if I'm trying to make a very sort of in your face look, I might go up to a 0.5, but I very rarely go above that. It starts to look too much beyond that point. So let's go up to around point, 0.4, I feel like it looks pretty decent, 0.39, that looks pretty nice on here. So again, off and on, and you'll see that's adjusting a few of the hues, a few of the luminosities, a bit of the contrast, some of the saturation. Um, these LUTs were created in Lightroom using stills from video frames, so they're specifically meant for skiing, really. So yeah, LUTs are not a one-stop fix. Um, you know, you might find that after you've added them, you have to readjust some of your other settings. You know, maybe the contrast is too much or not enough, or the saturation has gone off, or there's one color that's starting to look a little funky as a result of that LUT. So you will, you will have to adjust settings after adding a LUT and it's not as simple as just chucking a LUT on a video and there, bam, you're done. So I'm gonna move on to the next few things I like to do. First of those is I like to add a sharpen. Sharpen from the effects browser here. I'm gonna stick that on and I'm gonna leave that at the default 2.5. Um, again, if you look, you'll see it just makes that video a little bit sharper. If I zoom in close, you get a better look at that. So that's without the sharpen and with the sharpen. Again, don't want to overdo it because you'll start to get some weird sort of artifacts appearing in your video if you go too high. So I'm going to leave that at the minimum sort of 2.5. And then a stylistic thing I really like to use is film grain. This really depends on the project. I don't use it on everything. I'm going to use the realistic grain under the style here and I'm going to bring the amount right down to around sort of 10 to 15. Um, again, very easy to overdo it and it'll ruin your video, but I really like the look that it adds to your videos. It gives it that sort of filmic look. Usually I'll then watch it through 
and as I'm watching it, I'll start to notice things. Like here, I'm seeing the snow is very bright. So coming back into my color curve here, I might just ease back on that S curve, maybe drop those mid tones down slightly. It looks a little bit better. Sky getting a bit of a vignette in the corners here. Um, so it's a constant sort of balancing act of trying to find what looks good. And a lot of it's gonna come down to your sort of personal preference. So again, just to show you a before and after, this is before the grades, that's color corrected, and that's with the grade. So you can see I've tried to not overdo it. It's quite subtle, and I think that's really key. And as with a lot of things in video, it's always a good idea to go away, get some fresh eyes, and come back and look at it later because you'll notice things you didn't notice before. So yeah, that's one way to create a grade using a LUT. The other way is to not use LUTs at all. Some people hate LUTs and I can sort of relate to why. So I'll just turn off sharpen and film grain. I'm just going to delete that LUT. Um, I'll leave the hue saturation curves and color curves as they were because like I said, I quite like the way that makes my videos look. Um, but I'm going to jump back into the hue saturation curves and I'm going to start to play with these top three curves, the hue saturation and luminosity. And using these three, just like you can in, in Lightroom, you can create a very similar sort of look. So first thing I might do is say, okay, I want a little bit more teal in my sky. So I'll take the dropper here, select the sky, let's bring a little bit more teal, something like that. Looks Again, you don't want to overdo it. It's got to be quite subtle something like that I can turn it on and off to check so adding a bit more sort of green to that sky getting rid of some of that sort of purple tint that will be in the sky there uh, maybe I want to play with the saturation to let's just have a look at an extremely blue sky that's too much and that's with the sky all the way down but I quite like the darker sky so maybe I'll drop that down a touch um, I'm just going to script forward a few frames here and look at this green. So let's jump onto that green there and maybe I'm going to bring that, make it more green or I can start to make it more sort of orange. Quite a more orange, I quite like that look, going for that sort of orange and teal look. I'm going to decrease the saturation on that as well and quite possibly the luminosity just so it's not quite so bright in the frame. So that's hue, saturation, and luma. Um, now that I've done that, I might jump back into color curves, and you can also use the color curves as well here. So maybe I wanna increase that contrast a bit more. I might add a slight fade to that blacks, to those blacks, or depending on the look, something like that. And I might decide I wanna add a bit of color contrast too, so I can play with these color curves here. Bit of an S curve to the reds they see that adds a lot of blue so I'm going to counteract that with a blue curve a little bit green so this is sort of creating color contrast here so I'm just playing and again subtle is always better if I turn that off and on you can see you can very easily create quite a powerful grade just using the curves here and if we compare this grade and this grade you see they're not far off each other um, I might add that sharpen back on and chuck on that film grain and let's have a look at the first old grade using a LUT and this grade using color curves. So you see you can create a similar look by using either tools. Um, arguably creating it from scratch is always going to be better, it's more unique and more appropriate to the clips. Uh, it is definitely a little bit harder and takes a little bit more practice. It will generally give you better results than using a LUT, however. Let's have a look at the video color corrected and the video color graded. Corrected, graded, corrected, graded. So you can see that grade when I turn that adjustment layer on and off. Thank you for watching. I hope that was useful. Um, let me know if I miss anything or if you've got some ideas of your own or you want to share some of the techniques you use when you're creating. Um, your grades and um, check out the link to my website below if you want to get those free LUTs um, that I mentioned earlier and um, yeah hopefully I'll see you in the next one.